This week, Elon gave a fascinating presentation to employees at Starbase, which included a lot of fascinating information about Starship. So, of course, we're going to break all of this down and note all of the important tidbits. We're also going to discuss all of the changes at the launch site, at the production site, and everything else that's been happening this week. Like I said, it's a lot to go over, so let's get started. I'm Jack Beyer for NSF, and this is your Starbase Update. As a light appetizer, let's start with the launch site and discuss the changes that have been happening to the Orbital Tank Farm. As with every week lately, there is a lot going on at the Orbital Tank Farm, where some of the tanks were removed, scrapped, and carried away. Goodbye Orbital Tank Farm tanks! So far, the work seems to be mostly focused on one of the old water tanks and GSE-8, which was initially to be a methane tank, but was then later converted to water as well. As you can see here, and as we talked about last week, one of the tanks, closer to the launch pad, has already been removed. This was the original water tank, which only consisted of the outer shell. A second tank has had its shell removed and is standing there as just the bare inner tank, attached to a crane. That is GSE-8. After the water tank was removed, GSE-8 was then also removed and brought to the scrap area at the launch site where the dismantling process started. You can see here it's already had its lower dome removed. SpaceX also removed the base of the original water tank, as well as some plumbing related to hardware in that area, to fully clean it up. That's about it for the launch site this week, believe it or not, but the production site got busy. Taking a peek now inside of the Star Factory, we can see that work is already in progress inside the building's expansion. You can even see some Starship barrel sections inside the still open factory. They really are building the factory while already beginning to work in it. Next, let's move to the spot where the old Midbay building was, where we can see ongoing road reinforcement work, which is probably needed given the traffic that runs over this road, including heavy SPMTs. We also saw a LOX header tank on the move, which looks vastly different from previous Starship header tanks. The current suspicion is that this is hardware related to the upcoming version 2 of Starship. And we can see here, it's a more sophisticated design for this next generation vehicle. Sadly, the label does not include a serial number, so we can't say for sure which ship this will be used on. It does, however, confirm that it is a LOX header tank. Next up, we also saw a hot staging ring on the move. But don't get too excited, this is not a new hot staging ring. This is the original test hardware that was used to verify the concept and construction over at the Massey Outpost. Now this could be a prelude to this hardware getting scrapped. Or SpaceX could just be moving things around to free up space at the production site. As always, We'll just have to wait and see. Meanwhile, over at the Star Factory, we see more work on the next extension of the factory, which will ultimately also lead to the end of the last tent in Starbase. These tents were initially constructed to help the work on the first generation of Starship vehicles, but over time, they've been superseded by the Star Factory. Dare I say they've been star-seeded? No, no, I don't dare. <laughs> Shut up, Crow. Part of this expansion process is the work on the main frame of the factory, which, depending on the wind and crane angle, can be quite tricky to accomplish. Speaking of weather, recent events have led to the cladding on the new mega bay getting damaged, but likely a quick fix either way. SpaceX is still cleaning up the temporary fencing while building the new Star Factory over it. Inside the Star Factory, we can already see new clean nose cones and barrel sections, as they are in the process of being prepared for stacking. For note, while they look incredibly clean right now, that comes down to the fact that they are new, and there is not yet any dirt in the welds. This will change over time. We've seen similar clean parts for a Starship before. Hopefully one day we get a tour inside of the Star Factory and can see all of the amazing things that are going on in there. But for now, from the brief glimpses that we do have, it's quite a robust facility and exciting to see it starting to come online. As teased earlier, the expansion of Star Factory has one more implication, the end of tents in Boca Chica. So goodbye to the scrappy Boca Chica tent era. Part of me is sad to see it end. But the other part of me knows that this is the inevitable progression of things that will ultimately mean SpaceX is able to crank out the huge amount of hardware necessary to make sure Starship meets its goals for the Artemis program, for Starlink deployment, and eventually Mars landings. So there you have it. That's the end of Tent 3, aka the Nose Cone Tent. It was demolished overnight after having been disassembled partially over the previous several days. Now, Tent fans, 
don't get too sad just yet because there still is the shipping and receiving tent over on the other side of Remedios Avenue, but I don't think we really count that as the production site, that's more the Sanchez site, and it also wasn't one of the original three tents that were built, so still one tent, but no more tents at the production site proper. Next up, in this video, two things are happening at the same time. In the background at Massey's, we see a new GSE tank being placed. This might be part of potentially upcoming static fire tests at the Massey outpost. And in the foreground, we see a pile driver performing some foundation work. It's unclear what this foundation will be for, but it could be part of SpaceX's recently announced Rio West projects to build a restaurant, a grocery store, and retail facilities in this area. Which honestly sounds really nice, because Boca Chica could use some public facilities. That is, assuming these facilities will actually be public. It would make sense if this is indeed the construction for the Rio West project, as completion of it is slated to be done before the end of 2024. Next to all of this construction effort, we saw a ton of Starship shuffling this week, so feel free to keep track along with this exhaustive list. The mystery around Ship 26 goes on, as now a large amount of stringers have been installed on it. While we hoped, or at least some did, that it would be scrapped soon, it is still clearly serving a use for SpaceX as they continue to modify it. We'll have to wait and see what the final result is, and I'm personally dying to know what will become of this cursed ship. Ship 26 was later disconnected from the crane, from which it got stability during the recent stringer modifications. Next, over in the high bay, work on Ship 32 and Ship 31 continued. Ship 31 received an aft flap earlier this week as SpaceX closes in on finishing two more Starship prototypes. More ships are also getting ready to fly. This week, Ship 30 returned from Massey's after finishing its cryo-proofing campaign, ahead of engine installation. It was then stored at the Rocket Garden. SpaceX then apparently decided that the Rocket Garden was getting a little too busy and kicked Ship 26 out. The testing campaigns at Massey's did not slow down either, as Booster 12 also performed a cryogenic test on the cryostation. Ship 31 then apparently had enough of the high bay and started to move around. This was to give Ship 30 the space to move to the correct station for engine installation. Ship 26's exciting week did not stop as the prototype was then lifted in the middle of the night. And it was not the only ship that was lifted that night. Ship 30 was grabbed by the two-point lifting system before being moved for transport again. Later in the day, Ship 32 was then moved and rolled over to the Rocket Garden. Ship 30 moved back into the high bay after that, following Ship 31, which is also still in the high bay. Whew, that's a busy week of ship movements, as it seems that SpaceX is hell-bent on getting as many prototypes ready for flight as possible. All right, now for the main course. SpaceX was kind enough to post on Twitter an internal company update that Elon gave, and this update covered basically everything from Dragon to Starlink to Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, but what we're going to go over here is the information he dropped related to Starship. So let's get started. In the recap of the first and second flight, Elon mentioned that the power of the Delu system is enough to destroy the rocket if it were to shoot straight upwards instead of to the side. Now that's not anything really interesting Starship-wise, but it is interesting to think about the sheer power of this Delu system that we saw installed in mere months' time on a completely shattered foundation, no less. We then got confirmation of something we already knew, but it's still cool to get a final answer on it. We will get a second tower in Boca Chica, Texas. It will be used to allow for launches, and the other tower will undergo upgrades. A timeline was not attached to this, and details of what upgrades will be done to the existing tower were not provided. Also speaking about Flight 2, Elon mentioned over 1,000 upgrades to Starship between Flight 1 and Flight 2, including the electrical thrust vector control, which has this really cool demo video where you can see the engines doing their wiggle during TVC checkouts. Finally, Elon talked about hot staging, how it came around in just three to four months and worked without a problem on Flight 2. Rounding out information on Starship Flight 2, Elon let us know what happened to Starship on that fateful flight. And in fact, its failure was sort of counterintuitively because it didn't have a payload. And the liquid oxygen uh, ultimately led to fire and an, ex and an explosion because we, we wanted to vent the liquid oxygen because we normally wouldn't have that liquid oxygen if we had a payload. <laughs> so ironically, if it had a payload, it would have reached orbit. Not having a payload meant that the Starship had excess liquid oxygen on board, which SpaceX wanted to vent in order to create a more representative situation in terms of how the vehicle would be re-entering the atmosphere after performing a mission. Venting this excess liquid oxygen created a fire, which then led to an explosion 
and, well, sayonara ship 25. Moving on to future plans now, Elon mentioned that SpaceX has a roadmap to get Starship to a capacity of 200 tons to low Earth orbit, while still being fully reusable. The first step in this roadmap is Starship version 2, which will have a host of reliability and optimization upgrades. Elon also mentioned a version 3 of Starship, which will be stretched and add between 10 to 30 meters of the overall Starship stack. We've got a, a version 3 ship, uh, design that will stretch that that be even taller <laughs> probably end up being I don't know 140 meters before it's all said and done maybe 150 in the end this could be related to the tower upgrades he mentioned earlier in the talk as the old tower would then be too small for the stack and overall this should probably come to no surprise but SpaceX wants to reduce the time in between flights and fly more often which I like the sound of that for flight 3 Elon confirmed that the target is to get to orbit perform an in-space engine deorbit burn to prove they can reliably deorbit, and perform the tipping point NASA contract to demonstrate propellant transfer between the two tanks. Further items tested on Flight 3 will include the payload bay door and PEZ dispenser system. The aim of the company is to solve the orbital refueling problem by the end of 2024, or 2025, and overall exceed the payload goals to the moon that NASA has, to ultimately enable Moon Base Alpha a human base on the surface of the moon. So there you have it. There's the most interesting bits of information that we got from the company presentation regarding Starship. I, for one, am super excited to see the evolution of this system. And I really would like to see version three, nice and stretched, maybe a taller tower, who knows? Put in the comments when you think we'll see version two or version three of Starship start to come online. That's it for this week. Thanks for watching. And as always, be excellent to each other.